Hey, what's up folks? Michael here with Primal Legend. In today's video, we are talking 3D printing. I got a slew of stuff here that I want to talk to you guys about, let you know about some upcoming projects, and then get your input on a few things. So stick around. Okay, so as many of you already know, I've gotten a 3D printer. I've had it for about three or four weeks now. It's been up and running for about two weeks now, and I've had it running nonstop ever since I got it. It's been going probably 12 solid days, 24 hours a day. In fact, I've got stuff printing right now. And I want to go over a bunch of stuff that I've got. As you can see, there's a ton of things on this table. I've got things, you know, like this and all these kind of weird things that I've been printing. These owls were the first thing I printed. They came on the, uh, they came on the little scan disc when I first got the machine. And I got to tell you, I've been hooked ever since. When I first got this printer, I was like a kid in a candy shop. I couldn't wait to get out here and start printing anything and everything I could think. I guess I got a little overzealous and really tried some pretty complicated stuff. And I really needed to take a step back and take it one step at a time. There's a definite learning curve with 3D printing. And while I do have a technical background, it's my 9 to 5 job. That doesn't necessarily qualify me to be an expert in 3D printing. I'm brand new to it. It's not in my wheelhouse. It's not anything that I've done before. Not only am I having to learn the software, I'm also having to learn the printer itself. That's a very technical piece of machinery. It's not like a hot glue gun, although it does kind of function like that. There's a lot of things you have to level a bed and a ton of different things that have to be done. One of the most challenging things I've had to deal with regarding the printer is scale. Now, in my mind, I know a millimeter, an inch, all that type of stuff. I can logically think about that and understand that a millimeter is just a little bit, and an inch is not all that much, and a half inch is less than that, and I get that. The problem I was dealing with was that when you're working in this 3D software, it's you get a distorted view of what you're looking at. You know, when you're looking at the screen and you're seeing something that's two, three, or four millimeters high, and visually on screen it appears to be so much bigger than what it really is, I'm not touching that. You, you, you tend to look at the thing, you tend to look at it on screen and think to yourself, it is a lot bigger than it really is. For example, I've been working on these boxes, right? All these little storage boxes and trying to come up with the right idea. And the first one I did was this right here. And it's not a bad box. It's got a neat lip that you can hold on to. There's plenty of room for a, um, a label if you want to put a label on it. And it's nice and thick. The problem is it's too thick. I mean, this thing is, I mean, if a burglar broke into the house, I could probably bludgeon them to death with this thing. I did two of these and printed both of them at one time. And while I'll keep them, I'll use them. They were a waste of material. They were a waste of time. 19 and a half hours it took to print just those two things. That's a lot. Now this looked a lot bigger on screen than when the, the wall thickness and everything than when I printed it. But I still thought it was a pretty good print, except for the fact that the time and the material was just a complete waste. So I went on the other end of the spectrum and did this way, way, way back. I mean, this is useless. This is pointless, right? So that's when I printed this. What is this? Well, this is a representation of the various thicknesses based on millimeters so that when I'm printing something out or when I'm building something and modeling something, I have a reference. I know what this is and this is and this is. I keep this with me at all times whenever I'm modeling on the computer. It helps me scale things out because it's like I said really for me anyway that was one of the biggest challenges. I printed a ton of different boxes. I've got all different thicknesses and sizes and depths and dimensions and everything and at the end of the day it was all practice really. Now I'll get use out of most all of these. Some of these are destined for you know trash. Um, some of them are barely usable. This one is definitely not. I'll probably recycle most of these things. This is going to be an upcoming video. I'm going to be doing a lot of storage, and it's going to involve woodworking as well as 3D printing. Uh, Alexander Chappelle, uh, I think that's how you say his name, over in Sweden, he did a similar process, and this is actually the inspiration for it, where I'm going to be making some drawer units and some shelving that will fit storage bins like this, or this, or whatever size I end up going for. I'm going to take you along for that ride. So some of the other mistakes that I made. I wanted to try to figure out a way to make a... In the hell is it? A little container, right? Again, this was like the second thing I tried to build. Here I am. I got the container right. The, the lid looks good. I've even got my initials in it. Um, but the threads were pointless. Again, being overzealous. This was the first one I tried. Didn't line up at all. This was the second one. So 
that's those. Then I tried to print templates for the router. This is something that I'm really getting, I really want to get good at. I've, I've got a thing where I have a square right here that would go onto the wood and then various shapes would fit inside here. I even tried to print this, but guys, come on. This is me not even thinking. Where are you gonna get a router with a bearing bit that small? I mean, I'm sure that they make them. I don't have one. I haven't seen one at the big box store and I'm not spending $30 on a specialty bit for one test. It's just not gonna happen. Again, victim of scale. With all that being said, this table represents everything that I've been printing so far. To be honest with you, there's things that didn't turn out so well, and there's other things that are just complete and utter failures. Now keep in mind, out of all this garbage up here, there's really something special I wanna show you, but you're gonna to have to stick around because it's coming up soon. And in the noise of all this mess, there's a few things that I'm proud of. These storage bins right here represent the latest iteration of what I'll be using to go along my back workbench on that shelf. It's got a little chamfer in the back right here, a little 45 degree edge, I don't know if you can make that out or not. Um, right about there, it's got a 45 degree edge. That is so that when it sits up against the corner, if it ain't perfectly 45, it's gonna sit even closer, which I already tested and it works just fine. Hey, before I get too far in this video, if you like this type of stuff, maker stuff, 3D printing, woodwork, leather work, any of this type of stuff, consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to have you as part of the community. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that when I do upload a video, you get notified. And if you do end up liking this content or you like what you're seeing so far, please give me a thumbs up. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that you like what I'm producing. And let's face it, I'm not just making videos for YouTube, I'm making them for you too. When it comes to 3D printing, just because I'm, I've got a 3D printer doesn't mean that my entire life is gonna turn plastic. I genuinely still love and use these boxes. I got a bunch of them right here, I'm in the process of finishing, probably like eight or nine of those. I love wood, I always will, never gonna stop changing that, and I'll always have these little boxes. These are just gonna be supplemental to what I have. Now, regarding the prints and things that I'm making, the one thing that I did want my whole life, which involved this and a couple of these other things, is a lightsaber. Yeah, you guessed it, a lightsaber. I'm a nerd, give me a break. These represent all the test prints that I went through in order to get the final design and final layout right and make sure everything fit perfectly. All that testing, all that printing, all that work ended up resulting in this. My very first lightsaber. Yes, at my age, a lifelong fan of Star Wars, I have never built my own lightsaber, not even at a PVC pipe. The closest I had was old busted golf clubs. I used to paint the shafts different colors and we would have, uh, we would play Empire Strikes Back in the backyard. So what I've got is a copper pipe. I've got a 3D printed emitter, handle, hilt, and switch. I went through and I went with kind of a steampunk style. Um, I'll, put, I'll throw some pictures up here. It'll be easier to see that way. And I've, I went through and cut some grooves in here to make it look like this is actually panels instead of just a pipe. I soldered some rivets in here and uh, really kind of aged it and weathered it a little bit. And I think it came out great. I actually, this, this design is a design that I like. This is what I wanted. Uh, I, like I said, I went through a bunch of test prints and, it, and came out with something like this. So definitely when it comes to cosplay and some of the other stuff that I do, uh, terrain building, 3D printer is definitely going to be a game changer. I also have some LGB trains, and no, not that LGB, LGB way back in the day, a German company used to make model trains, and we have them around the Christmas tree every year. They're from back in the 60s. They're huge, the big ass trains. And uh, I've got some parts that are broken that need to be reprinted and things that need to be adjusted and fixed. This 3D printer is going to help bring the busted pieces back to life. There's a couple of train pieces that I can't use on the track anymore because they're broken and you can't get the parts because the company has since gone out of business. I don't want to keep you too long. I want to try to keep this video manageable, but I want to let you know what's going on and where I'm at. There's a lot of 3D printing stuff coming along, but it's not gonna be all 3D printing. That's not what this channel is gonna be about. This is going to be, like I said earlier, supplemental to the other kind of work that I'm doing. Now, I've got a few things coming down the pipe, one of which is a build that's kind of big for the type of stuff that I'm doing, and it's gonna be a cabinet dedicated to this 3D printer. And I'll cover the details about the cabinet in a later video, I'm not gonna do that here. Now guys, I wanna be sure that the content I'm providing is exactly what you wanna see. If you're subbed to this channel or you're considering subbing to this channel, what type of videos are you gonna to wanna to see when it relates to 3D printing? Do you wanna see my fumbling through Tinkercad online? Do you want me to get into the slicer? 
keep in mind, I'm no expert in this stuff. I'm brand new. I mean, I'll take you along for my educational journey, but don't look to me to be a teacher. But if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing, doing some screen captures with the stuff online, seeing me do the prints, let me know. I'd love to show you that kind of stuff. It'd be kind of fun, actually. So anyway, folks, that about sums up today's video. I appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and stay tuned for more videos. I'll see you soon. See that? He's talking about pieces. <laughs> Knuckles, piece of shit. Bastard from hell. D tickler. All right, hey, I'm a nerd. It is what it is. I love a lightsaber. F Ryan Johnson. I've been testing. All these represent the various testin. testes. They represent. These are the testes. Mind the balls. Loki agrees. <sighs> All right, anyway, okay, all right, back to the video. Attention. The f was I saying? Uh. When did I have waffles? But where, where, He could have followed. I can't believe he's not doing, he's not even gonna blink, is he? What the hell is I was gonna say? Whatever, all right. Take two.